Hi there, welcome to my channel, Clean Food Living. Today's video is gonna be on a Super Greens nutritional profile comparison. The profiles that we're gonna cover and really dive into deep are the mineral profile, the vitamin profile, the omega profile, and the amino acid profile. The super greens that we're gonna to compare today are kale, Swiss chard, and spinach. These are well-known, good-for-you super greens. But is one gonna stand out from the rest? Find out. Now last time I did a video on comparing the lettuce, romaine, green leaf, and red leaf. So I did an in-depth nutritional profile comparison of those three types. And what we found, for those of you who watched it, all lettuce are not equally yoked. There were some clear winners there that may have taken you by surprise because I know they took me by surprise. So if you haven't seen that video already, you can check it out right up here. I'll also put a link at the end of this video. So hit that subscribe button and let's find out which super green is best. Here's our vitamin profile chart. All values are gonna be based on one cup. I'm gonna read each individual measurement per spinach, kale, and Swiss chard for those of you who want to just listen along instead of watch along. For vitamin A, beta carotene, spinach has 2813 IU, which stands for international units. Kale has 10,302, and Swiss chard at 2202. For vitamin C, spinach has 8.4 milligrams, kale at 80.4 milligrams, and Swiss chard at 10.8. There is no vitamin D in any of the greens. For vitamin E, spinach has alpha E at 8.4 milligrams and gamma E at 0.1 milligrams. There is no vitamin E in kale or Swiss chard. For vitamin K, spinach has 145 micrograms, kale at 547, Swiss chard at 299. For vitamin B1, thiamine, spinach has zero, kale has 0.1 milligrams, and Swiss chard has zero. For vitamin B2, riboflavin, spinach has 0.1 milligrams, kale 0.1 milligrams, and Swiss chard has a value of zero. For vitamin B3, niacin, spinach has 0.2 milligrams, kale 0.7, and Swiss chard at 0.1. For vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, spinach has a value of zero, kale 0.1 milligrams, and Swiss chard at 0.1 milligrams. Vitamin B6, spinach has 0.1 milligrams, kale 0.2, and Swiss chard has zero. There is no vitamin B12 in any of the greens. For folate, spinach has 58.2 micrograms, kale at 19.4, and Swiss chard at five micrograms. For the remaining nutrients, they're not technically vitamins, but they behave like vitamins in the body, so I'm gonna group them here under the vitamin profile. For choline, spinach has 5.4 milligrams, kale has zero, Swiss chard has 6.5 milligrams. For betaine, spinach has 165 milligrams, kale has zero, and Swiss chard has 0.1. For lutein and zeanthanin, spinach has 3659 micrograms, kale 26,499, and Swiss chard at 3960. I put a red check mark on the green that has the highest value for each nutrient. Kale comes in first place, spinach in second, and Swiss chard in third. Next up, we have the mineral profile. For calcium, spinach has 29.7 milligrams, kale 90.5, and Swiss chard 18.4. Now I wanna make a little note here on the calcium for these leafy greens. The majority of the calcium content is in the form of calcium oxalate. This is a non-bioavailable form of calcium. So oxalates or oxalic acid is a naturally occurring compound in foods, but tends to be particularly high in leafy greens such as kale, spinach, Swiss chard. The oxalate molecules bind with other molecules such as calcium mineral molecules, and once they attach to the oxalic acid molecule, the mineral is no longer bioavailable for the body to use, and therefore the body flushes it out. Oxalates aren't typically a health risk, but if you do have a diet high in oxalates and your kidneys or your large intestine are not able to flush it out properly or efficiently, calcium oxalate can cause kidney stones. And for people with sensitive digestion issues, oxalate can cause irritation of the intestines. Most people don't have an oxalate problem, but I am just putting it out there as an FYI. 
there are two ways you can reduce the oxalate content of leafy greens and one is by cooking them. Yes, you do lose the heat sensitive vitamins and compounds, but minerals are not destroyed by heat and it can actually become more bioavailable to the body since the cooking causes the oxalate molecule to release, therefore making the calcium, the iron, etc. now bioavailable. Now if you need a low oxalate diet for a health condition you have, cooking may be an option for you since these leafy greens are so rich in nutrients, you definitely don't want to eliminate them from your diet, but do be aware of the oxalate situation. The other way you can reduce oxalate content is through fermenting. Now this is my personal favorite method because all the heat sensitive nutrients like the vitamin C and the B family complex, they're not destroyed but actually amplified in the fermenting. So live nutrients like enzymes are also kept bioactive, unlike with cooking they are denatured. Now fermenting not only decreases the oxalate content, making the nutrients bioavailable, but it amplifies the nutrient content. For instance, iron bioavailability can increase by nearly 200% through fermenting. Now every mineral is not going to have this 200%, but one of the lowest percentages raised is something like 37% for vitamin C. Hey, that's a big difference. So fermenting, I think, is really just a fabulous way to go and you're also getting a probiotic rich food as well. I did a video on how to ferment kale and I go further into discussion about what oxalates are and other plant anti-nutrients and how fermenting affects the nutrient values um, a little more specifically than what I'm covering here. So if that interests you, either learning how to ferment greens, because the video may be on fermenting kale, but the technique, the method works for any leafy green really. It could be mustard greens, collard greens, spinach, Swiss chard, etc. So just click on the link in the corner up above if you wanna see that video, or you can click at the link that I'll put at the end of this video so you can finish this one and then check out that other video. Okay, so moving on. For iron, spinach has 0.8 milligrams, kale 1.1, and Swiss chard at 0.6. For magnesium, spinach has 23.7 milligrams, kale at 22.8, and Swiss chard at 29.2. Phosphorus. Spinach has 14.7 milligrams, kale 37.5, and Swiss chard at 16.6. Potassium, spinach has 167 milligrams, kale 299, Swiss chard 136. For sodium, spinach has 23.7 milligrams, kale 28.8, and Swiss chard at 76.7. For zinc, spinach has 0.2 milligrams, kale 0.3, and Swiss chard at 0.1. For copper, spinach has zero, kale has 0.2 milligrams, and Swiss chard has 0.1. For manganese, spinach has 0.3 milligrams, kale 0.5, and Swiss chard 0.1. For selenium, spinach has 0.3 micrograms, kale 0.6, and Swiss chard at 0.3. I put a red check mark on the leafy green that contains the highest value of each mineral. And we've got kale coming in at first place, spinach in second, and Swiss chard in third. Let's jump into the omega profile. For omega-3, spinach has 41.4 milligrams, kale 121, and Swiss chard at 2.5. For omega-6, spinach has 7.8 milligrams, kale 92.4, and Swiss chard at 22.7. I put a red check mark on the leafy green that has the highest value for each omega. And we've got kale in first place, spinach in second, and Swiss chard in third. We have our amino acid profile up next. For protein, spinach has 0.9 milligrams, kale 2.2, and Swiss chard at 0.6. Tryptophan, spinach has 11.7 milligrams, kale at 26.8, and Swiss chard at 6.1. Theronine, spinach has 36.6 milligrams, kale at 98.5, and Swiss chard at 29.9. For isoleucine, spinach has 44.1 milligrams, kale at 132, and Swiss chard at 52.9. Leucine, spinach has 66.9 milligrams, kale at 155, and Swiss chard at 46.8. For lysine, Spinach has 52.2 milligrams, kale at 132, and Swiss chard at 
Methanine, spinach has 15.9 mg, kale 21.4, and Swiss chard at 6.8. Cysteine, spinach has 10.5 mg, kale 29.5, Swiss chard is at 0. Phenylalanine, spinach has 38.7 mg, kale 113, and Swiss chard at 39.6. Tyrosine, spinach has 32.4 mg, kale 78.4, and Swiss chard is at 0. Thaline, spinach has 48.3 mg, kale at 121, and Swiss chard at 39.6. Arginine, spinach has 48.6 mg, kale at 123, and Swiss chard at 42.1. Histidine, spinach has 19.2 mg, kale at 46.2, and Swiss chard at 13. Alanine, spinach has 42.6 mg, kale at 111, and Swiss chard is at 0. Asparatic acid, spinach has 72 mg, kale at 198, and Swiss chard is at zero. Glutamic acid, spinach has 103 mg, kale 251, and Swiss chard has zero. Glycine, spinach has 40.2 mg, kale at 107, and Swiss chard is at zero. Proline, spinach has 33.6 mg, kale 131, and Swiss chard is at zero. Serine, spinach has 31.2 mg, kale 93.1, and Swiss chard has zero. For hydroxyproline, all values are zero for spinach, kale, and Swiss chard. I put a red check mark over the green that has the highest value for each amino acid. And once again, kale dominates. For highest amino content, kale is first place, spinach is second, and Swiss chard in third. For an overall review of each category, we've got kale in first place for the vitamin, mineral, omega, and amino profile. Kale crushes it. If you were surprised by some of these results, I mean, did you know that kale was just gonna crush it? I really thought spinach was gonna give a better run for the money than what it did. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you were surprised or if you knew it all along. Also, let me know if you want to see more videos that do an in-depth nutritional profile comparison like this video, like the lettuce video, because as we learn, not all super greens are equally yoked and not all lettuce are equally yoked. What else is really different yet in the same food category? Know what I mean? So leave me a comment below and let me know what you guys want to see more of. Here's that lettuce video right up here and then I've also got these other videos here for you guys to check out. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.